stuck on the cord. This is part two of my video on the Can-Am built flat. Hi and welcome to Steve's How To In 5. Now this is part two of my, oh God, I've got a visitor. Part two, hello darling, look out, don't get stuck on the cord. This is part two of my video on the Can-Am Belt Flutter. And if you haven't seen my first video, oh look out for the cord. Um, if you haven't seen my first video, that was video number 28 on Steve's How To In 5, and it shows the amount of flutter that you get in a belt on the Can-Am Spider. What I've done is fitted the Can-Am Tensioner, and today is all about showing whether the belt tensioner works. I use the Sling Mods Tensioner, it's not a video on how to fit the tensioner. Um, Sling Mods do their own video on that and there are lots of videos on YouTube of how to actually fit the tensioner. Uh, where have you gone? Over there, <laughs> sorry. Um, lots of videos on how to fit it. This is whether the tensioner worked. We take it for a ride, give it a bit of a run and see if it did solve the problem or not. So we'll head into the workshop and have a look at it actually fitted on the bike. So there we are, the belt tensioner is fitted. And you can see if I just put my fingers under here and give it a lift, you can see the spring loaded. And what it's actually doing is just pushing down on the belt. Uh, one of the things to be careful of though when you fit your belt tensioner is to make sure that you get this roller on top sitting square on top of the belt. Um, the bolts and the size of the elongated holes that are in the mount bracket do allow it to move either side. So before you do your final torque on the bolts, um, make sure that you've got it sitting square on the belt. Now I've got my little bizzo here, um, technical term for gauge, and we'll just see how much pressure it is actually putting onto the belt. That will lock up shortly. There it is there locked up. So that is 5.5 pound or uh, 88 ounces. Flick it over one more, that's 2.5 kilos. So that should be 2,500 grams. Yes, it is. So that's the amount of downward pressure it's putting on the belt. So we'll pop the bike all back together. Oh, actually, before I do that, I will just show you in here, and you can see the two mount bolts where it actually mounts. It's, it's so straightforward. Um, this job is a, is a half hour job from start to finish. I've been on it now for about 15 minutes, and I just have to reassemble the plastic panels that we took off. So um, I'll pop them back on and let's go and give it a try. In this first clip, I go through the gears and I run the taco quite high. I go all the way up through the gears and it's under very heavy load here. We're looking at the top section there of the belt and there's very minimal movement really. In fact, there's hardly anything at all. But interestingly enough, if you look down into the left bottom of the screen, the unloaded side of the belt flops around or flaps around, whatever you want to call it, quite a bit. I, I was surprised to see that. I didn't pick that up in the first set of videos. But the loaded side, which is the top, that's the one that puts the vibrations through the bike. And there were no vibrations whatsoever. In this second clip, and there was a little break in the film there, I just accelerate away about oh, three, three and a half thousand RPM, right up through the gears, down through the gears, um, I tried loading it at low revs in a tall gear, and uh, look, there was quite a bit of footage. I mean, this is riveting stuff, isn't it? Looking at this belt go around. I won't, um, for obvious reasons, show all of it, but look, there was no signs of the flutter at all. So, cruising along, I'm sitting on 100 kilometers an hour. That's if I rotate that round there, you can see that. That's 60 mile an hour, it's pretty windy, um, but uh, look, good as gold. There are absolutely no vibrations whatsoever. I've been up and down through the rev range, so that's good. I've tried accelerating hard and uh, then decelerating, and you'll see that in the footage. Um, all of that was done in slow motion, and uh, this time I've upped it to 240 frames per second to try and get um, try and get the, the correct reading of that belt but look it all seems very very good uh, I'd also like to um, just say a quick hello to Chuck in the USA uh, Chuck sent me an email just in regards to the um, I think it was uh, what was it video number 28 that I did 
which shows the belt in slow-mo and the flutter that you get with it and uh, he was just asking if it was okay for him to use that footage for uh, he, he's got a workshop in the US he's worked on Can-Ams now for 10 years and he'd never seen the scene the belt flutter recorded in slow motion so um, yeah you know more than welcome uh, if it can help any Can-Am riders out whatsoever you know use the footage and I enjoy doing it anyway but uh, there you go so it looks like it is a success and uh, now well it's time to go for a ride cheers well hopefully that puts to bed any question as to firstly whether you get belt flutter and what that vibration is that's coming through your bike or your, your spider and secondly as to whether the belt tension it works it definitely does I mean this is smooth now up and down through the gears loading it unloading it heavy acceleration um, it has solved or at least reduced it to the extent that I can't feel it anymore that vibration coming through um, a question that was asked of me as to why I used the sling mods tensioner and not the BRP tensioner simple reason is I went to my BRP dealer here in I live in South Australia uh, the city of Adelaide I'm just outside the city of Adelaide and we have only the one dealer in Adelaide and they wanted six to eight weeks to get me a tensioner I got in contact with sling mods in the US 10 days later the belt tensioner is basically on my doorstep I think that's pretty good value but you do have to keep in mind that if you use the sling mods tensioner at least on the F3S anyway uh, this is a 17 F3S you will have to reduce the belt cover just cut it off there's a little little triangular section because it will hit the rear of the tensioner so you just need to shorten that a whisker but yeah no real big deal uh, pretty straightforward thing to do I think that's about covered it um, I have got a review coming up shortly on my Stealth B52 which is a, a high powered e-bike and I'm going to do a review on the Super Tenere uh, she's 10 years old now 1200 Super Tenere that should be a good one I'm looking forward to doing that and of course the Arai XD4 Adventure Helmet um, that one will be coming up shortly as well so don't forget to hit the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll see you in the next video so cheers for now I can't see the flashing light. Oh yeah, you're recording. <laughs>